Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm doing another extreme horror vlog. Ah! I've missed doing these. I really have missed doing these because I didn't do one for September because I was out getting surgery. So it's been two weeks since my surgery and I finally feel okay to start coming back to YouTube. And I am so freaking far behind on books. I am so far behind on my TBR. I filmed my... Um, bookshelf tour you probably seen it already and like I had 30 less books than I do now and that was only a few weeks ago because like books were sent to me and stuff and then books were sent to me on Kindle I am stressed I am so stressed <laughs> trying to get through my TBR in the next two weeks I don't know what to do so I'm doing an extreme horror vlog I've been like asking you guys what videos you want to see when I come back to YouTube a lot of people said vlogs um so that's what I'm doing I you know I, I never really thought that these vlogs were entertaining because I'm just sitting and like reacting and talking about books but apparently you guys like them they are my most viewed videos on here, so I, I don't know. So I guess we're doing vlogs. Um, so let me know. So today's vlog, what really inspired me to want to kick this into gear is I just got a copy of Burner by Robert Ford. Um, I've been seeing this all over Instagram, and by all over Instagram I mean two people, my friends, and um, both of their reviews made me want to immediately read this book. Apparently, I don't know anything about it. I'm actually going in totally blind, but it's like realistic extreme horror, which is my thing on this channel, um, and is just insanely, insanely depressing and traumatizing from what I'm hearing. I think whatever this is about, he pulled some information from like real cases. He said this happens in real life. I read the um, like the intro last night and I was like, oh my god, this sounds so good. I read one chapter, so I really don't know anything. But um, so I just wanted to read this quickly. So it says, the topic matter of this novel is the most terrifying thing I've considered in my life as a husband, father, friend, and a man. No writer wants to cause true emotional trauma to a reader, but the terrible truth is life doesn't provide trigger warnings. The evening news and social media don't come with them either. Real life hits you with a sledgehammer when you least expect it. But unlike those examples, the novel you hold in your hands is not a surprise. It's a known thing, at least to me, and an opportunity to avoid additional mental pain should be taken and more importantly offered. This book deals with brutal material, it's violent, there are drug and rape references. This is not an easy book to research because the more facts I uncovered, the more difficult it began to accept this is an actual reality in the world. You can choose to avoid these kinds of things in both fiction and the daily news, but to ignore them, to turn away, and pretend they don't exist in the world we live in is akin to sticking your head in the sand. Whether we decide to look or not, these things still exist, even if only in the shadows. This novel has to do with guilt, with redemption, with how pain and experience change you. It has to do with the action as well as the inaction because seeing something and do seeing something wrong and doing nothing, nothing at all is the worst kind of evil there is. <gasps> Doesn't that sound so good? That literally summarizes the reason that I read extreme horror. Like it's not some torture porn kink that I have that people like to say about me. It's the real life aspects of extreme horror that traumatize me that force you to look at these things that actually happen in real life it just guts you like uh, oh man I'm nervous but I'm I don't want to say that I'm excited but I have been looking to pick up a heavy hitting book recently um so that's why I decided to start with this one I actually was like debating on reading true crime but apparently this sounds true enough so I'm going to read this one and let you know how it is I'm I don't know I've just been in the mood to read a heavy hitting emotional book like this so and then I have some other books like uh let me see there were a couple that were sent to me like Jonathan Butcher sent me The Chocolate Man and that one I've been saving for a vlog because it's about poop and like that makes me throw up. So that will probably be entertaining. Um, Judas Sonnet sent me an arc of Psych Ward Blues and that's a full length book. I've been really looking forward to that one. Um, 
just picking out like specifically like I've been wanting to get through Otis Bateman's backlist like I'm just looking at what's on my immediate agenda here um Brian G Barry has a couple of books that I've been wanting to check out um DW Hits sent me an arc of uh you're going to die in here so this one is just um sex violence and gore <laughs> again I don't know I don't know what anything is about I always go in blind but uh this one looks wild and then you know I also have another book by him stay out of the tub I've been wanting to read um lots and lots of books my friend Chris and I are doing a buddy read of Christopher Triana's The Long Shadows of October so I'm probably gonna put this one in here I don't know there are so many books that I have to get through um, let me know do you want to see another 24 hour reading vlog let me know I can try to do that I can try my best um, Yeah, I mean, just let me know. Let me know either way. I'm going to do this one this week. And then if you want to see a 24 hour, let me know. Okay, thank you. Bye. I'm going to go read this book now. I'm going to go get traumatized. Okay, hi. So it's later. So I read about 80 pages of Burner. So it's still like, I still don't really know what's going on, but that's the point. Like, I will say we are following um, these two different women, Iris and Audrey. So you get past and present timelines for each POV. It's less confusing than it sounds, but um, basically this woman, Iris, like in present day, she's at the police station, there's a detective, they're like, what did you do? And then we find out that like something has happened to her. And then this woman, Audrey, um, She's like married to this great husband and they have this daughter and she thinks everything is great but then her husband dies and she starts uncovering that like he is not who he said he was. She finds a burner phone, burner, and things kind of go from there. So I'm, like I said, 80 pages in and things are just now starting to happen. Like we're kind of off to a slow start. We're kind of just getting some like little backstory of the situation and we're just kind of jumping all over the place <clears throat> between these two POVs. So um, nothing graphic has happened yet. I really have no clue where this is going to go. Obviously, I will share with you my thoughts once I get there. Um, but so far, so good. I mean, I'm intrigued. Um, it's a very quick read. Like I just sat down for a half hour and I'm like already 80 pages in like the chapters are super short. So um, yeah, curious to see where this goes. And obviously, I'll update you probably tomorrow. Um, I'm off work this week. I'm out on medical leave. So uh, today's Monday, tomorrow's Tuesday. So I'm planning on finishing this tomorrow. So I'll let you know when I get there. So it's the next day. It is uh, 12 o'clock. It's 12 noon. And I got farther into Burner. I'm on page 145. Guys, this is fucking intense. I'm like, I've been having panic attacks and shit randomly, but I'm like, it's hard for me to breathe reading this. I'm not even kidding. Um, this is messed up. This is so messed up. I, like, even just thinking about it, I'm, like, shaking. Like, uh, this is super, super realistic extreme horror. It is gut-wrenching. It is extremely upsetting, traumatizing, shit that happens in real life. The reason that I panic being a woman, the reason that I'm afraid to leave my apartment as a woman, um, hearing this shit in the news about like creepy people like lurking around Target and the grocery store and whatever else, XYZ parking lots, uh, in vans looking for women, um, should I just tell you, it's not a spoiler really, it's about trafficking. I mean, I've, I've talked about this before on my channel, that that is like the thing that I, I, 
I have so much anxiety leaving the house. Like, I have so much anxiety uh, around men. I'm really not healthy mentally. <laughs> So reading shit like this genuinely just traumatizes me. I don't know. It's like a double-edged sword. It's like, yeah, it's traumatizing me, but also helping me kind of cope and like deal with those traumas. It's a weird thing. I have a weird relationship with extreme horror, but um, yeah, this is like heavy. This is sad. So fucking sad. And, um, I just, I, I, uh, I feel like I'm just losing my soul page by page. <laughs> um, very, very well done though. Excellent. So well done. Writing is fantastic. Why have I not heard about Robert Ford before? Because I'm kind of obsessed. This feels like a five star so far. It's just really taking those horrific real life situations and putting them in your face and making you sit with them. It's just, I, I'm speechless. I don't even know what the hell to say so far. Uh, I have 130 pages or something like that left of this book. So I'm going to try to finish it up. I'm going to make lunch. Um, I think I'm just going to eat some chicken salad or something and then ju uh, jump right back into this. This is destroying my life, honestly. Um, also, I just got the mail and look what's here. Ah! Travis Otis Bateman sent me one of his shirts for my birthday because my birthday's um, this month. So I am so excited. I love it so much. Like it is so well done. Like his shirts are amazing. So I will leave the link uh, where you can get these in the description box down below. I'll leave it linked, but I just absolutely love this. I can't wait to wear this. I'm probably going to wear it tomorrow. I should put this in the wash, right? Is that what normal people do? Um, I have like a bunch of laundry to do, dishes to do, and I'm not feeling 100% still. You know, I had surgery two weeks ago. That was a trip. I posted all about it on Instagram. Like if you are curious about my endometriosis at all, check out my Instagram. Um, but basically, yeah, I had excision surgery where all the endometriosis was removed. Hopefully it doesn't grow back. Hopefully he got a hundred percent of it or else it will grow back. But, um, he thinks he got everything. Hopefully it doesn't come back. I sound like a broken record right now. Um, I had my appendix removed. I had a presacral neurectomy. So the nerve bundle that sends pain signals from the uterus to the brain was removed. Um, I had my, a bladder scope done, found out I have moderate interstitial cystitis. So I basically can only drink water and like tea that tastes like mud now. Um, <laughs> my bladder's like really messed up and causing me pelvic pain, which I never knew before. Um, I had a heart shaped uterus that had to be corrected. Um, I had burns on my ovary from my last surgery that had to be removed. I had an ovarian cyst rupture during surgery. I have possible adenomyosis, which is endometrial tissue inside the uterus. I, um, uh, what else? There was something else too. Like there were so many things wrong with me. I have to go back to physical therapy once a week, but my work doesn't want to let me go to my appointments. So I might get fired even though I have FMLA. It's a whole thing. It's literally a whole, whole thing. My life is extremely stressful. Oh, and I'm also adopting a dog. So... <laughs> my life is just chaos all the time but I'm hoping this is just like the beginning of craziness and uh or the end of the craziness I mean um I'm gonna be looking for like another career and shit soon so I don't know we'll see I'm just kind of taking life day by day right now 
and some reading traumatizing books. So that's my little life update, as quick and simplified as possible. I'm gonna go make lunch now and I will see you once I'm done with that book. So I just finished Burner. Holy shit. Holy shit. This is intense, traumatic, but so fucking well done. Like, I, I can't get over how well done this book was. Like, so well written, the pacing was perfect, the characters, how they ended up, like, their stories being intertwined, the ending was perfection. Um, I, nailed it, nailed it. This is, honestly, I haven't felt this strongly about a book in a long time. And um, I'm like speechless right now. I'm honestly so speechless. I can't wait to read more from this author, but um, this is horrific. Like I said, it's about trafficking. And um, it just, the way that the story was told and developed and it was handled so well, like so professionally, so respectfully, um, the characters felt like real people, this felt like a real story, like, this is the kind of horror that truly gets me, like, truly horrifies me, because you could turn on the news and this would be a story, like, it's real. And I think capturing that the world is full of real horror, and sometimes the real horror is not, you know, a demon fisting your mother, <laughs> sometimes the real horror are just people, just everyday people. And he did such a fantastic job. There is a gigantic bug out there, like this big. Um, oof. But um, he did such a fantastic job at capturing that and telling this story. I, I just, I don't even know what to say. Um, it's difficult, it's a difficult, read but it was extremely extremely well done in the back of the book you know he has his little author's note at the end and it says the world is not always a good place there are terrible people who do terrible things some will be discovered many others won't but the truth is those things happen more than anyone likes to believe and the world we live in is full of plain white vans Oof, I got like chills reading that. And then there's also information on um, human trafficking. As of 2019, the United States had 11,500 human trafficking cases reported. The most common type was sex trafficking, which was over 8,000. Um, and then it says, you know, the states with the highest human trafficking numbers, California, um, Texas, Florida, New York, and then there's a list of the 10 top states. Oh, I'm just like gutted. I'm just completely, I don't know. This is my biggest fear as a human being. And he just captured my fear and wrote it into a book. Honestly, I think this takes the cake for like the most traumatizing book I've ever read, but like the most well-written, like respectfully done, I don't know, like I highly, highly recommend this. If you are a reader of extreme horror, you want something extreme that's going to mess with you, I highly recommend this one. And it's a quick read. It's like so fast paced. The chapters are so short. Like you just want to binge it. I'm going to start the last shadow, the last shadows of October, the shadows of October, the long shadows of October by Christopher Triana. My friend Chris started it today. Um, and we're buddy reading. So I'm going to start that and try to catch up to him. And then I'll give you a little update. Oh my God, I just sat down and I was literally about to go, hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Oh my God. Um, I, it's the next day, if you couldn't tell, it's 11 o'clock. And I just wanted to update you and let you know that I started the Long Shadows of October last night. I only got 41 pages in. My back is absolutely killing me. So when I sit for too long, 
like my back just can't handle it. Um, I might try walking on my little walking pad treadmill. Um, I bought one of those. Literally the best purchase I've ever made in my entire life. So yeah, that's why I only got 41 pages in. But I'm going to try to read a little bit now. But this is about this woman who is like in her 80s. She's a succubus ghost. So she's also as well as in addition to a ghost. <laughs> Does anyone know the reference that I just made from a uh, Kroll show? She basically needs to find these teenage boys. I don't know. Um, something with her capabilities, I'm assuming. But she needs to find this, um, these teenage boys. And so she finds them and they're like two scumbag guys, like just, ugh. And she brings them to her home and she says she's going to pay them like a whole bunch of money to house sit. And so they go there and they, you know, invite these people over and they're throwing a party. So all these girls come over with their breasts out and everything. And, um, they don't realize that they, it's like, it's like a trap. Okay. So now something is going to happen with this succubus thing. Cause now she got all the kids there at the house. So that's the premise of this book. It's okay so far. I don't really have a strong opinion other than I absolutely hate the two main guy characters. And then like the way that the girls are described in the book is just like, oh, this girl with, you know, her breasts and nipples, me writing a smut book. <laughs> and it's just like, what, like, I don't know. They just feel like very shallow annoying typical horror movie characters to me and like I just wish that they were interesting because I'm not really interested in them uh, so I'm just curious to see where this goes I don't dislike it I don't I'm not like obsessed with it so uh, it really could go either way for me so I'm going to go read some more of this and eat lunch and then I'll check in on you uh, this afternoon okay hi so I woke up from my little nappy nap and I am on page 150. So I have about, I don't know, 80 pages left, something like that. And this book is okay. I did kind of mess up the synopsis a little bit, but I'm not really going to correct myself because it's kind of like a little bit of a it gives it away, you know? Um, Belle is rubbing herself on the tripod again. Uh, I mean, this book is okay. Not my favorite Christopher Triana, that's for sure. Uh, but I don't dislike it either. It's just, I can't stand the characters, like these teenage teenage teenagers that are like sleazy. This whole book is like them thinking about sex, them having sex, them wanting to have sex. Like, it's literally the entire book so far. It's like reading from the perspective of a horny teenager for 230 pages. Like, I don't know. So it does drag in that sense. Um, the actual like horror, I'm not mad at it. It's not my favorite thing in the world, but I'm not mad at it. Um, I do think the gore could be amped up a little bit because that's just me and I'm sick in the head. So there are things that are just like okay and then there are things that I don't like so I just don't really know how I feel so, so far. it's about 4 15 now um is my camera focused I am exhausted I'm just uh, that's how I feel um so I did finish this book and I really I, I don't know I don't know how to read it I wasn't a huge fan I didn't dislike it but I'm not like obsessed with it. I really just hated the characters. You know, it was supposed to be like cheesy, corny, horror movie, that sort of thing. Um, and I can see why the characters acted the way that they did because they were just scumbag teenage boys. My cat is driving me nuts. Um, 
So I mean like I get it but unfortunately like when the characters just don't stick the landing for me the entire book just doesn't stick the landing for me because I just don't care. Um, the last like third of this book got really fast paced um, supernatural horror. So if that's your thing I think that you would like this. If not probably stay away from this one. Um, you know supernatural not my favorite thing in the world but I like it when I like the characters, but since I didn't like the characters, I just didn't really care all that much about the supernatural elements, but I mean, it was okay. I think the writing was great. I absolutely love his writing, you guys know this. The characters just drove me absolutely insane, oh my gosh. The two scumbag guys, and then like the one main character, Kayla. She's just like a dumb bimbo. I was like, what the fuck? The only thing I know about Kayla is that she has like nice titties and... She's a virgin and has daddy issues. So, <laughs> I can't, I can't, I really can't. Um, I don't know. I'm thinking about going with like a three star. Like I said, I didn't hate it. Just not my favorite. So... Anyways, moving on. I'm either going to... I have to do some things. It's already 4.15. Um, and I have a doctor's appointment in the morning. So I'm going to either start Psych Ward Blues by Judas Sonnet, or I'm going to start The Chocolate Man by Jonathan Butcher. Okay, so my hair probably looks wild. Um, I'm like 20% through Psych Ward Blues. It's the next day. I, it took me this long to realize I've just been reading short stories. <laughs> I read like two um, short stories, but Psych Word Blues is a novella, and um, my version has all the short stories in the beginning. So I just read the first one, was freaking nuts. I loved it. Um, very just like weird horror um, about this deputy and... Um, going to investigate this sketchy dude and then the second one is like teens at a party and something happens um i'm really into this so far i at first i was like what am i reading like how are all these things connected because psych war blues is supposed to be like a splatterpunk like post-apocalyptic world sort of thing and i was like wait a second like i'm 20 percent into the book and none of that has happened so far. I was like, what is going on? And then I like looked through it and I was like, oh, these are the short stories. <laughs> so I didn't even get into the book yet. So I'm going to read all the short stories and then kind of give you a little update. And then I'm going to read Psych War Blues and then give you an update. So um, yeah, I was at the family doctor. I got a flu shot. I'm absolutely freaking exhausted. Um, I have to go back to the family doctor most likely. They said that they're going to call me today. We'll see. Um, and then I have to go back there to pick up paperwork for work because the doctor doesn't want me going back to work yet. But my work is like, no, you have to come back to work. So now I have to like make all these phone calls to the short term disability place and to my work and to the doctor. And it's like pushing papers around. And it's just so exhausting. I've been dealing with this since before I left on medical leave. And it's just never ending with the phone calls and the papers. Oh my god. Um, so yeah, it's just a lot. I should be like applying for jobs, but I've just been dealing with Hi, my job. It's the next day. I am, oh, it's Friday. Um, not doing well today. My pain is like severe. I'm depressed. Like... I had to stop at the doctor this morning and whatever. Um, I've basically been in bed all day sleeping. I keep falling asleep. I'm just not feeling well. I just wanted to check in and give you a super quick update. I probably look like trash as well. But um, I, well, I told you I started the new um, Judas Sonnet book. So I read all the short stories. And I really, really liked these short stories. They were weird. Just like bizarre, weird horror. Which I always say like, oh, this isn't my, my typical like thing, you know. But when it's done well, it's done well. And I think sometimes the issue is that it's 
the issue isn't that it's not my thing, the issue is that it's just not executed well um, in terms of character development and plot development and pacing. I'm talking about like other books when I say like, oh, maybe this just wasn't my thing. This, the truth is like any horror can be my thing <laughs> if it's done well. And I, I really, really enjoyed most of these short stories. Um, I'm trying to look and see what my favorite ones were. I would say my favorite short stories were uh, the first one, Youngin. Um, I liked Love Letter Slasher, The Last Hamburger Restaurant in the World, and Chaser. Those were my favorites. I really liked those. Um, Ick Theans was just really 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 bizarre but like batshit insane um stilts she said was like a inspiration she took inspiration from like scary stories to tell in the dark so it did give me that like children's book sort of like freaky <laughs> story um so yeah i i really enjoyed those short stories they were fun and they were just so well done with like character development and plot and for a super short story like it's rare that you get that and I just feel like she really excels in her short story writing like I don't know I honestly cannot name an author that does short stories better like that I've read from personally so far I just love her short stories and then um, I just started Psych Ward Blues and I am obsessed so far. I know that this story, look at my hair, oh my God. I know that the story is super personal and relatable to her and I'm sure it was very therapeutic to write, but I'm absolutely obsessed so far. So we're really just following our main character. He's kind of like talking to you, like it's a like diary almost. So he's like, hey, this is me, I'm in a psych ward, this is what happened. Um, you know, he's dealing with a lot of trauma, PTSD, uh, and depression, and just kind of catching you up on like what happened. And we start learning about like these other people in the psych ward, and just, you know, their day to day lives there. And at the same time, the world is ending. So this is like a post apocalyptic psych ward story and it is so freaking good so far the writing is fantastic honestly so far this is like her, what, one of her best books in terms of writing I would say like what the thing that I appreciate about Judith is that her writing keeps getting better it's not like there are some authors where they're writing it's like every time I read a book by them it's like I'm reading the same thing over and over and over it's like uh are you really growing developing you know what I mean where I feel like Judith every time I read something by her it's like written better and better and better and better and her older books like some of those are my favorite books of all time but I would say her newer books are definitely more well written um but I, I just love it so far. The character development is really what sucks me into her books and sucks me into her writing. And if you have shitty characters, I don't really care about your book. But this one, I'm just absolutely obsessed with the character so far. So I can't wait to finish it. Um, she also told me that she's mailing me the hardcover edition as well. So I'm so, so, so excited because she said it's huge. So I can't wait to get that and show you. And I'm so excited. So I'm going to try to finish that up, let you know my final thoughts. And then I think I'm going to start the new DW hits. I have so many like arcs and books that I'm trying to get through for videos and stuff. Um, so I hope you guys like vlogs. Okay. So it's a couple hours later, straight up not having a good time. <laughs> um, but I did finish Psych Ward Blues and I wanted to talk to you about it. I absolutely loved this book. I gave it five stars. One of my favorite Judith Sonnet books. Um, so like I was saying, you know, this book really stands out in terms of character development and just how strong these characters were written, but also, um, I'd say like halfway through the story it gets really weird like it goes into weird horror territory and um I didn't mind that because I think it was written really well 
and the plot was done really well and I liked where it went. Um, it's very obvious that this is personal and I just really admire the fact that Judith took her personal experience with dealing with her mental health and turned it into art and I just think that there's something so beautiful about that and turning your pain into art. Absolutely love that. Um, the meanings involved in this book, the commentary on religion, um, there's a lot of, religion is just a huge aspect of the story. It has to do with, you know, the rapture and there's just a lot of religious commentary and, you know, religious trauma and what happens when we die, the afterlife, that sort of thing. Um, also, I just really love there's a lot of commentary about um, the LGBT community and there's just like a lot of depth and meaning that goes into this story and it's also like disgusting. <laughs> like there's a lot of scenes that are going to be triggering in terms of gore and violence and a lot of people are going to be offended but um, I just think that this book was so well done. I just love when extreme horror and splatterpunk has meaning and commentary and I, I just think me personally having issues with my mental health, this felt relatable to me, like it just felt cathartic in a way. It made me stop multiple times and think like, oh my god, maybe that's really the way that things are. Like, I, I, I don't know, I found myself stopping and thinking about life and my own depression while reading this. So I do think that this book, you know, has a little special place in my heart because I'm also mentally ill. So I feel like if you are also mentally ill, this book might have a little special place in your heart as well. It was just beautifully done. Absolutely loved it. Her storytelling was amazing and I'm not a huge like a post-apocalyptic person. I don't know what it is but like the books just usually don't work for me and this is an example of one that absolutely worked for me. I just absolutely loved it and I just admire Judith's ability to turn her pain into good fucking books, okay? <laughs> and of course, you know, the afterword made me cry as usual, like what else is new? Um, so yeah, I just absolutely loved this one. And like I said, I also enjoyed a lot of the short stories as well, even though they were just like weird, bizarre, crazy horror. It was so well done. So I think since I'm having like tons of pain and this video is already really long edited, um, I'm just gonna read one more book. I'm going to read the DW Hits book. Uh, it's only 100 pages. So I'm gonna read that one. Tomorrow I'm going to look at some dogs and I have like a bunch of cleaning and crap to do but I'm in severe pain so I don't know what the hell is gonna get done. But um, I plan on reading that one and discussing that and that one is now out the Judas sonnet book is out in hardcover you can buy that now and i think the kindle version in the paperback if i'm not mistaken is out is there a paperback i don't know the kindle version i know it's like official release date is october 21st i believe um the dw hits book that i'm about to read it's an arc but it's already out so yeah. But yeah, I really wanted to read Chocolate Man by Jonathan Butcher, but I think I'm going to save it for my next vlog. I've just been talking way too much. Hello. So it's actually a couple days later. It's Monday. Um, I didn't read at all this weekend because I was super busy, went to visit a bunch of dogs on Saturday, had to like clean and move stuff around, I'm nesting. <laughs> um, yeah, I still have like a bunch of stuff to organize, I've been buying dog stuff and my pain has gotten worse, like my pain has been really bad the last uh, week, so yeah, just 
not having a good time, so I didn't read it all this weekend, but today I um, finally sat down and I read uh, You're Going to Die in Here in its entirety, so I just have a short little review for you. This is a short book. It's about 111 pages, um, so uh, the other books that I read were full-length novels, so I don't have anything um, super extensive to say, but this was enjoyable. Hold, sorry, my cat is eating my plants. I just got a Venus flytrap and my cat keeps trying to eat it. So anyways, um, I ended up going with a 3.5 rating overall. I enjoyed this. I recommend it. So we are following this woman named Shelly. She lives in this house that she always knew was haunted. There's something going on with like the third floor. Um, and now in present day, she's older and you know people are telling her like you need to stay on the first floor you need a first floor setup i am an occupational therapy assistant so of course i am like shelly girl what are you doing like just stay on the first floor does she listen absolutely not is she just like my patients at work absolutely um so she decides to go upstairs and she falls and breaks her leg so now, you know, her family hires these like caretakers to come take care of her. But um, she quickly realizes something is not quite right with these caretakers and the house is just getting crazier and crazier. So that's the gist of this one. It is wild, insane, batshit, crazy, bananas, insane horror, like just wild thing after wild thing after wild thing happening. Just wild, okay? Um, if that's what you're looking for, I highly recommend it. I think you're going to definitely like this one. Lots of sex smuttiness, but lots of violence, gore, uh, pigs, spiders, incest, uh, literally anything and everything that you can imagine. Um, so it is super crazy and wild. My only critique is, just like the Christopher Triana book, um, the character development was lacking a little bit for me. I wish we got to know a little bit more of the characters so I can be a little bit more invested in the story. I am just one of those readers. You guys know I'm a character-driven reader. I love character development. So that's just me. That's just my thing. I think if you're like a plot-driven reader, you don't really care. You just want the violence, the sex, the gore. You're going to absolutely love this one. So I recommend it. I just am one of those people where it's like, I'm always looking for some sort of character development or something that's going to suck me in and like grip me to the characters and the story. And, you know, it's like, how much character development can you put in, an, in a novella? Absolutely, I understand. Um, but I just feel like after reading Judith Sonnet, who consistently manages to do that, my expectations are just really high now. <laughs> but yeah, I did enjoy this one. I do recommend it. And his writing is just really good. Like, D.W. Hits, his writing is, is fantastic. So, highly recommend this one. If I had to rank these books, Burner is definitely number one, then Psych Ward Blues, then this guy, and then Long Shadows of October was unfortunately my least favorite, even though I'm in love with Christopher Triana. So yeah, uh, that is it for this video. I am just not having a good time. I thought I was going to be like better after surgery, like but I didn't realize that this recovery is just going to be such a long process and it's just really impacting my ability to film and just life has been really hectic in terms with like dealing with my job and um, looking for another job and now I'm adopting a dog like just a lot of things have been going on so um, I don't know how that's going to impact my filming schedule I'm trying to pre-film a couple videos just in case but yeah I will see you in my next video let me know what you want to see in the future and uh, I will try to do that at some point I love you guys and I'll see you in my next video bye